All and right. I go back every time I hear they did something with Mercy, and I'm like, oh, is she decent again? Uh, did you get the dice out of that yet? No, I didn't. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. But now it can be a tank dribble. Go ahead and do your your destiny. One light. Alright, go ahead and we'll go the markers are right there, so. One dark. because uh, we got the wild magic tonight. Um, you. Two, Two light. light. And then I'll, as soon as I set this up, I'll roll for those who are not here. Since they can still affect things. But, Actually, you can go ahead and roll for them. That'd be easier, actually. Uh, it's two lights. One dark. Two light. And then here's your two light. So we need two more light because. Oh, uh, we didn't have enough yet? Yeah. Okay. Let me see if I can find any. If not, we might just have to make a melt. Oh, yep, yeah, here they are. I think that's all the dice. Yep. So we are set for tonight. So... Alright, and what's our total? Five light, two dark. Alright. Alright, so last we left off, uh, somebody uh, got a ship on his hands. <laughs> Although it wasn't the last time we all left off, it was the last time he left off. You got a ship? You did. <laughs> <laughs> Bongo Bongo got a ship. He was given it by Asen because Asen wanted him out of his hair. <laughs> Tonight I'm gonna break out my alter ego sneaking disguise outfit. Well, a la Caleb, and his name is Mango Mango. Let me uh, update uh, what's been going on for your character. So you, uh, so when you left, you tried to make your astrogation coordinates to go to Naboo so you could go home. I'm taking it. I didn't make it home. You did not make it home. <laughs> you put in the wrong coordinates, and you uh, ended up crash landing onto a unknown world. Unless you're gonna be that guy that goes, "This is my home now." <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stick a flag in the dirt and call it Naboo too. <laughs> no, so it's Bongo Bongo Land. <laughs> <laughs> the happiest place in the galaxy. <laughs> The wackiest place. In this the is world. going home. <laughs> this is me so home now. <laughs> <laughs> Even the galaxy outcasted you. <laughs> That's what we're doing now. I don't care where I'm at. It's Bongo Bongo Land. All right. So you wake up because <laughs> obviously crash landing was not very smooth. So you were unconscious for a bit. Uh, let's see, let me get my notes on that out. Uh, let's see. I have the notes in here, I just gotta find the exact spot for that. Uh, so, you wake up and it's like this deserted world that you notice first off the bat. Uh, there's pretty much almost nobody here. Uh, Wait, where did that crash? Uh, you, so you try to look on I'm guessing you're going to look at the computer to see where on the map however you want to break it out to me I mean because does that make I mean that makes the most sense I guess um, am I on high ground uh, you're kind of the way you landed actually you're kind of wedged into a building a building so this place is occupied mm, you populated don't no it used to be. So the computer skill... Okay, so I'm crashing a wedge in a building. Mm -hmm. And from what you can see on the computers, there's no other signs of life. Well, there's buildings here that's already structures, so I don't have to start from scratch. <laughs> that makes Bongo Bongo land easier. 
Uh-huh. Uh, that makes it cheaper anyways. <laughs> but, well, we'll uh, see. Let's see. Ugh, Coke. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Uh, so I have your discipline, so I'm going to give you a discipline check. You have to make a discipline check. Uh, your discipline is... To use my eyes? Well, no, because of the <laughs> world. There's something about the world that you have to have a discipline oh, okay. check for. It's a mindfuck planet? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, even awesome. More awesome. Uh, take two green. I can channel so the mindfuckery. Uh, he gets two green for his roll. I can make this like a... A hellscape. <laughs> <laughs> Three bangs. Alright, let's see. And then how hard did I make that check? <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> oh yeah, and you said you got what now? You're not gonna be able to scare me off of my new home, no what matter how get? harsh you make it. Hmm? Three okay. bangs, three bangs, three bangs. Okay, so you succeeded. Good, cause I'm not leaving. <laughs> um, let's see. You didn't. Okay, you're fine. Oh, wait. Hold on. Do I, do I feel something, a presence in my mind? Uh, What's you going are on? feeling strained. From uh, what? What's going on? So, there's kind is of... Is the decor just that bad? No, it's... <laughs> is my OCD it's triggering a, it's me? A, it's, a, it's a force thing. <laughs> Come on, I don't know what that means. <laughs> you So, you feel... You want to try to do a perception type thing? To kind of figure it out. Okay, so order of events. I still want a perception to know where I'm at, what it looks okay. like around me. Yeah. And then I want to know what's, what's in my going... head space. Okay. So, I'll give you the out, outward stuff because that's just easy stuff. So, from so I you... look out the window and my ship stuck in this building and I see... Pretty much this wide open desert space. What, uh, is this the one building that exists as the there's, one I've there's, build- there's other buildings... <laughs> But, but they're underneath me, not as tall? Yeah, and, okay. and from what you can tell, they're just as in bad shape as the one you're wedged in. Okay. Uh, from what you can tell, there have not been people around for a good amount of time. Um, it would be a harder check if you were to actually try to figure out how long. Silence. <laughs> so, on a scale of 1 to 10, it's too quiet. Yes. <laughs> um... Opposed to ten quiet? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it just depends. Um, and as for other stuff, uh, looking at computers, you're on like this world that's not even really charted. Awesome. So. So, it w- hold on. It's been lived on, abandoned, it's, yeah. and it's still uncharted. Yes. So this is an old civilization. That would be the logical guess. Or is it just that the records are incomplete? <laughs> Backslash that, prequel memes. That's up to... <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's up to your character to interpret. I mean, to be fair, Naboo is a relatively recent world being discovered, too. Um, uh, going back into more headspace stuff, um, go ahead and... One yellow, one green. For a perception. Yellow. A nothing in a horseshoe. <laughs> so I don't know what's going okay, on. Okay, yeah, you don't yeah. Um God, I really want to know why I'm tripping. <laughs> I have no collection of what it's just a trippy vibe. Yeah, from Okay. Uh, the closest that you can probably tell is that there's So can I open the bay door in my ship? Yeah, and, you can you can start and, to leave. And and see what's Yeah. You can start to What explore. this structure is all about. What kind of structure is this? Is it kinda of like a modern human skyscraper kind of thing? Is it It's very Is it like a bug architecture? So it's like a bunch of Well it's metal. It's made of metal. It's metal architecture. Interesting. Um specifically Durasteel, which is their like Okay, that super implies super. that this or whoever built this structure here had advanced uh, methodologies. Yeah. Um, so you go ahead. So you're actually in one of the tallest buildings. You landed in a three stories high building. 
But that's not that tall. Well, it's the tallest here. Okay. It's still about 30 feet. 36 feet. Uh, so when you open... So it's not tall enough that I couldn't just jump out and kill myself now. <laughs> if I didn't want to be here. <laughs> but, uh... So when you open the door, it, it... Thankfully, the way you crashed, the bay door opens into the building rather than out of the Convenient. building. Convenient. It's Convenient. almost like... Yeah. It's almost, it's almost like, like the space be. gods don't want you to die. Right now. <laughs> Fuck the space gods, I jump. <laughs> um, so let's Damn see. it, I survived because my big fat ears sl- <laughs> slow down my terminal velocity. <laughs> you do... You do recognize some banners hanging around on these buildings, though. Uh, okay. What would that be? Uh, so from Game what signs? from what you can tell, they are Sith Empire. Is that a current thing? Yes, it's been a current thing. So this isn't like ancient architecture. This could be quite recent. It's just. It could be both. <laughs> it's one of those things where you don't know if this is an older Sith Empire. Empire, or if this is modern and for some reason they're not here, it's okay. mind blowing. Haven't they used the same insignia? Yeah, it's the same insignia for generations. <laughs> so that's the thing that's making it to where you're not sure. Misa don't know. Uh, Misa get bad juju vibes. <laughs> although you, you can see some language written on like signs. And you don't understand the language. It's not a modern language. Well, I'm I'm gonna make up a new language that uses the same lexicon, <laughs> and I'm going to decide that that sign says exit this way, and I'm gonna follow it. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> you find that a lot of the doors are locked. <laughs> oh, there's doors in this abandoned structure. Has locked doors. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, how do I unlock them? Well, you can actually... Or is that your say, way of saying don't go here? No, you can. Okay. Uh, they're not computer-based. They're actually mechanically-based. Perfect. Just, you know, surprise, motherfucker! <laughs> so, let's see. Your mechanics... They didn't know you were there from the ship landing. Uh, <laughs> they'll know now. <laughs> you get uh, one green. Apple pies, motherfucker! So he gets one Root green. Ass, motherfucker. One green? Yep. <laughs> you should... <laughs> oh. <laughs> I got a nothing. I was gonna say, you should be able to get this. I blank out like I just put... Look I just put my cup blanks. in the fridge and my milk in the cabinet. <laughs> so, you're, so you're just like... Hmm. Misa, don't understand Did you this. Did say I'm shooting blanks? <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, you just get frustrated, and you take out uh, your your weapon and just slice it open. I have a weapon? Uh, let's see. You I got a longbow and an electropole. Yeah, you use your electropole to just smash it open. Do I just, like, shock it, and then it engages the door? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Just okay. out of frustration. It's nice to know when nothing gets me in a locked door. <laughs> you, you go, key. <laughs> well, I also had some rolls here, so you're good. Um, Alright, so you make your way through, and you finally find... You find the stairs, and I'm guessing you're going to try to make your way down. No, I want to see what's in here before I leave. Okay. So if those are the exit stairs, then I'm going to look elsewhere before I go down. Okay. So it's kind of dark in here. And... Because uh, from what you can tell, there is no power source it's kind of fallen into disrepair okay are there is there a light fixture or a wall port anywhere yeah you can see some around i'm gonna stab my electro pole into it and see if i can get some lights to turn right so that's an attack on the wall (laughs) (laughs) oh snap roll for your melee uh melee (laughs) yeah melee uh one yellow one green three bangs and a horseshoe you should make it. Yes, you are good. <laughs> the wall's defenses are too high. <laughs> <laughs> you basically just walk up to it and are like, I need power. <laughs> Unlimited power. Prequel memes. <laughs> Backslash hashtag. Prequel memes. <laughs> and you end up, 
using your electro staff to somehow get light going. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, what do I see uh, down this corridor? So you can stairs behind me. You see a couple of uh, extra hallways, hallways, uh, doorways, and some windows. Uh, there's actually you can. Uh, okay. First thing you actually notice are some piles of clothes kind of haphazardly scattered about. Gross. Uh, they know was here. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually you can actually make it you can actually make a knowledge lore to try to guess what happened. Okay. Knowledge lore. Uh, that is a yellow. One horseshoe. You actually do. Uh, somehow. Uh, from what you can tell, you were actually not far off. Uh, you realize the clothes fell to the ground when the wearers vanished. So it wasn't it wasn't a, a naked stripping man. <laughs> <laughs> In the last moments of survival on this city, he noticed he couldn't make it, so he just stripped off his shit as he flew down the hallway. <laughs> Oh, like Misa big the force. Uh, let's see. Uh, you also see some, uh, let's see, you're on the third floor, so I have to look at what's on the third floor. So, it mostly consists primarily of offices, cubicles, and workstations. But, uh, near the back of this hallway, you kind of find a single Durasteel door. Uh, Before I go to the obvious door that you're pointing me at, I'm going to go to the nearest workstation and see what they were working on last. There's any working computers. <laughs> Does he have any sticky notes out? Uh, you can... Remember to electropole proof the walls? Well, you see more of that unknown language written down on the notes that you can find. I'm gonna I'm gonna go far fetched here. Can I, using the notes, attempt to decipher the language? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I feel like a fun knowledge education thing would go into this. So let's do it. Uh, you green. have you have a green. Yes, <laughs> a green. All right, let's go for another blank. <laughs> Is it blank? <laughs> no, it was, a I... it was a horseshoe. Okay, I was about to say, should I even roll? <laughs> Because you're going to roll like twelve yellow dice back. <laughs> you did not. You you can you can you basically decipher what you want to decipher it as. So whatever language that you've decided to come mm, up with. Oh, this way, that way, exit. <laughs> so basically, however you think he would decipher a the worst exit written fifty bajillion times in ten different ways. <laughs> yes. All right, let's go to that Durasteel door. You were. All right. Yeah. So you uh, see another terminal. This time you see an actual computer uh, keep security keypad next to it. Um, Is this thing functioning? Uh, it's f functional enough. You could pro. You actually see it's a keypad or a terminal or both. It's a keypad. So not a terminal, not like a computer access. No, 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 no. It's more of like, but you can see. Like, okay, I'm gonna try zero 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 enter. <laughs> Are you just going to try to hard break into it? No, I'm just going to try four zeros and press enter. I mean, like... Oh, I didn't know if you were trying to do everything. The universe-wide. <laughs> uh, you know inept what? security officers. You know what? Higher low. High. <laughs> okay, it works. <laughs> I'm guessing the high was for it to work. Yeah. So, it works. Because, um, you know what? There was no way I was going to just decide what that code was. Um... <laughs> Bebu uh, granting administrative access. If you want to do that sort of role, you should say hi, good, hi, bad. Yeah. Uh, there is a uh, brief pause, and then the unmis uh, unmistakable zap of a powerful electrical di electrical discharge, uh, and the keypad lights up, and the door slides open. Cool. Uh, the room beyond houses the primary computer data bank. So now there are computers. So like actual computers. Um, you can see that there is some power to them left. Uh, before I go in all the way, I'm going to use my electro pole to wedge the door open. Why? It's already open. 
in case it decides to shut down and lose power. So I don't want to just... die in a lonely room on an abandoned planet. So are you... So are you charging the door or just leaving it, like, in the middle to, like, in case the door starts Yeah, you know, shut? like a pole between two trash compactor doors closing it. Okay. <laughs> Let's hope Dura Steel isn't stronger than that Electro pole. <laughs> well, it's an Ultra Steel pole. <laughs> <laughs> that I made up just now. <laughs> it's probably wooden. <laughs> no, it's metal. It's got metal because it's an electric charge. Otherwise, how would that work? Well, we'll see. Yeah. If it breaks, I die anyways. Who cares? Maybe those are the type of trees they have on Naboo. <laughs> <laughs> Who's, Ultra steel trees? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, who says wood on, on, on Naboo is the same as wood on Earth? So are you going to go ahead and try to mess with the computers now? that you? Yeah, I'm going to try zero, have an zero, exit zero, strategy. zero again. Well, this one is actual computers. It, they're, they're already turned on. There's no, like, hacking into them. Okay, I'm going to try to look for uh, an access um, log to see when it was last accessed. All right. Because that would tell me when the last time it was used. All right, so as you're going through it, it's going to take about five minutes to go through this computer system. Although for you, it's going to feel like an eternity. Uh, because I'm all alone or because I'm bad? Uh, because you start, you can actually start to fill that void I w that was pressing in earlier. It's oh, I feel a void. <laughs> um, kind that's perfect because I was thinking about killing myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I am keeping track of that strain that you took earlier. <laughs> okay. Uh, don't worry, you're good. You have a strain threshold of 12. You only took 8 so far. Oh, I'm almost already there, so... Well, strain only makes you unconscious. You're not going to die from it. Just pass out. Yeah. All right, let's see how far I can push this. <laughs> <laughs> and when you pass out, I guess we'll jump to Jared and, and we'll come back to you when you wake up from it. Um, if I wake up. Meanwhile, back at the farm. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, at the same time, as you're trying to get through this data, your brain is like struggling to get through this. Do I just feel sleepy? No, it's How more, do I interpret this? It's more of a... How can you is explain it, the absence of something? I feel like the something? worst feeling is when you haven't slept in four days and you have to concentrate very hard. That's <laughs> probably what... Okay, we'll, we'll interpret it as that. Uh, another Off way... A nap. Another way you can interpret it is you can feel like something's pulling on you trying to rip away the very ex essence of your existence. Oh, fuck that. <laughs> so kind of like... Needing to work after four days, no sleep. Uh, <laughs> uh, for an instant, you kind of feel as if uh, you're going to be undone, and that your physical body is discorporating into trillions of subatomic particles. Can I, like, force bubble shield my mind? You can take it. Yeah. I mean, that. Yeah. Wild mage. What? Wild, hold on, wild force. My head might explode. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm going to force bubble myself to try to separate myself from these influences. Uh, let's see. Let me get my... What am I, like, next to a four star or something? Let me What's get a D100 out. All right, so. Uh, it's a 10% again, because he's been rested since last time. <laughs> Joke's on you. You're in forest hell. <laughs> Good news is, you passed. So you get to use that power you wanted. So okay. you're able to... Do I have to roll? Uh, nope. I, I did a roll. Uh, it's a D100 thing that I have to do in the background. All right. Um, you passed your thing, so... Do I feel segregated from that force presence? Uh, you feel... You don't have to do as hard of a check now. It's more of an easy check. Okay. So, um... But where were we on that computer, then? Uh, well, let me do that check real quick, and then you can... Uh, so what was your discipline? Uh, two green. Double blinks. Here we go. A bang and three horseshoes. Yeah, you're good. So, you actually fight off it this time. Go ahead and roll computer. You have a green in computers. You are the best person to be off on an adventure by yourself. I have no skills. <laughs> I have skills? But by, your, by yourself, you're the most skilled? <laughs> what? 
by yourself. You're the most skilled. You have no one to compare anybody to. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true. I can't do it. Nobody can. <laughs> so, uh, I'm the best. All All right. Right. Go ahead and make that roll. No one's ever going to keep me down because I'm the best. What am I rolling? Uh, one green. One bang. Let's see how he did. I I did roll. You are, you pass. You, this is like baby's first dungeon. What is this? No, these aren't easy checks. I'm, honestly, I'm surprised you're making them. He's he's sitting there going, I don't know the language. I don't know what these computers even do, but. Uh, hey. <laughs> There's a hole in the wall. Electro pole. <laughs> Lights. <laughs> Key. <laughs> uh, and then, all right. So, you can tell as you're going through all this data and kind of data mining, I guess, is really what you're up to. I guess numbers are universal. So. Yeah. Uh, you see. I read binary. Yeah. You know, Gungans. Yeah. We swim in binary. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. My goodness. Uh, you actually get a lot more information than you were looking for. Which was nothing, so what did I get? <laughs> uh, so as you're going through this, you're actually able to kind of start to translate some of the files. And it, it's actually going to take you a little bit longer than the five minutes to translate it, of course. Yes. So when you get done, you're... You see that the last time this was logged into was over a thousand years ago. Um, I'm going to see if I can try to find some kind of uh, language deciphering module okay. or application. <laughs> see if I can get that from the Play Store. <laughs> <laughs> well, Just down there a little bit right from the forest. <laughs> you see a giant symbol that you've, you know, a similar symbol to what you've been seeing. To, to I'm gonna Google it. <laughs> <laughs> to Galactic for dummy. <laughs> so thankfully, you're actually able to kind of work out some of it, uh, and you actually can get some of it into basic language from like keywords here and there that you reckon that like okay, are so almost universal. It's, it's been here a thousand years since anybody's been here. What is the point of this installation? Is there anything here of value? Uh, you is can there tell. Other alternative means to get off. These so, are my questions. Uh, so, from what you can tell, this is a government building that you're in. Uh huh. And so I can vote. <laughs> I don't think the Sith is a democracy. <laughs> I can apply for a Gungan ID. Uh, Swimming permit. So, you kind of get a rough translation of a lot of the stuff, and you can tell that. Uh, let's see. You find a consensus in the data, like actual, like a consensus that was taken, and that there of like different planets that were under the Sith, the Sith Empire's control at the time. Huh. So because they took a consensus, as we're like, who's alive and mm -hmm. yeah, taxes, taxes, yeah. So most of the planets taxes are, or die. yeah, most of the planets are actually known to the main <laughs> galaxy, and so a lot of them are like planets that, from what you know, aren't really Sith affiliated anymore. Hold on, I'm going to draw some conclusions here, and I'm going to be way off, but this planet is not registered in the archives that I know of. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, uh, what, what did you say it was? Uh, off the record, what was it? It's just not in Uncharted. The, Uncharted, yeah. But it's also a government building for an empire that's a thousand years old. I'm guessing this is a secret base, like Area 51. <laughs> uh... Well, actually, I can give you the information on this planet because you actually are able to translate it. Okay, sure. Uh, so, all this predate all the data that you're getting predates that thousand year mark, uh, which uh, specifically the Great Hyperspace War is something that's mentioned a bit, which was like the first big conflict between Jedi and Sith. Uh, eventually, uh, you're able to find some information on the Sith governor of this planet, and you actually get the planet's name, Nathema. A uh, Darth Vitiant was the governor, uh, and you can, from what you can read, he was kind of fear mongering the people of Nathema against the Jedi immediately after the Great. Not for the course. Yeah, he, uh, immediately after the Great Hyperspace War, uh, and there are actually some transcripts of speeches that he made, as Pass. well. <laughs> so you're not going to see no, the records. I'll save you the trouble. Pass on the political stuff. 
All right. I just want to know what tier that I can use. Uh, because you know, Bongo Bongo Land has got to be a thing. <laughs> we need to get that 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 Disney What's World. What's the source S of this mind fuck so I can turn that shit off? Well, in that case, you might want to look at that vitiate stuff. Oh, okay. He was mind fucking everybody to vote for him in an empire. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, think the type of tactics Hitler was using post World War One. Propaganda. Yeah. This is forced propaganda. <laughs> Uh, so, Vitiate's words were actually sowing the seeds of terror with graphic descriptions of what Jedi would do if they were found. Uh, and he had consciously and carefully driven the people into a state of panic, knowing they would blindly follow anyone who offered hope. And, of course, he was quick to fulfill that role. And he put out a call for all surviving Dark Lords to join him on Nathema in a ritual that he prom- Oh, my God. That he- just pause it. All surviving Dark Lords, you know... Those victims. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. So he called for them to uh, join him on Nathema in a ritual that he promised would lead the Sith to salvation. At the same time, though, you also can read he was as he was doing this, he had top historians and scientists secretly working on trying to find the location of a planet called Drummond Koss. Uh, and he had operated that in total secrecy. Uh... And he had them sequestered day and night in a research lab uh, where they were studying ancient maps and astrogation charts. Thankfully, the leader of this team had been a meticulous record keeper. Oh, perfect (laughs) for me. (laughs) Uh, So thankfully, you have every step of the process that had been documented. To find this hidden planet? Yeah. What's on this hidden planet that's worth going to? Uh, Apparently, it's like an ancient Sith homeworld. Um, So I don't want to go there. Uh... You even have the moment of triumph, so you actually know where the planet is now because the hyperspace route was put into these documents. Well, I, I'm just saying, I'm asking questions like, what is of interest there for me, or did I just learn the one place I don't want to go to? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. This is curiosity that killed the cat. I don't feel like jumping into that mimic chest right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, you do see that in the final entry in the team leader's project, uh, that he, the logs detailed her efforts... Uh, to prepare her findings so they could be presented to Vitiate in person. Uh, Lord Vitiate publicly proclaimed the commencement of his great ritual list three days after he was provided this information. So he basically said, hey, it's time for the ritual, like three days after he was secretly told about where the Sith homeworld was. Okay. Uh, Chronologically... What did the ritual do? uh, he, He was just claiming that it would save the people. And I'm guessing it did not... From what you can tell. Uh, chronologically, there are no other records after this proclamation. Oh, so you weren't entirely wrong with the Thanos <laughs> idea of... <laughs> there they go! <laughs> Dark Thanos. Uh, so, nothing from the research team. Uh, nothing from Dark any... viscous. There's nothing from any of the ritual, obviously, destroy... Uh, so, some, from what you can tell, the ritual destroyed Nathema and snuffed out all life on this world. Um... Uh, and that, so that's my. That's what I'm feeling. My life being snuffed. Yeah, uh, you can actually tell that the force. Does it feel like a pillow is being slowly brought around well, my face? Because it's not just that. It's not just that. Am you, I feeling snuffed? Well, it's not just that. You can also tell like the force doesn't exist on this world anymore either. Like no. The force doesn't exist. Then what's acting on me? It's force. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's also the force. That's the dark side of the. Well, force. no, 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 no. Like. There is a lack of force, which is why you are feeling the way you are. Oh, because I'm segregated from the force. I'm feeling weird. Yes. I'm guessing... Okay, well, you know what? I've decided I do want to go to this hidden home world. Just to get more... That's Bongo Bongo Land in the making. Because <laughs> this world is just... There's too much baggage. Man, I don't, it doesn't feel right. There's too much baggage. <laughs> You know, it's got wide open spaces, but you know what? You, know, you make a good point. I, I kind of like that. It's inside. already been it's already been uh, cleared off for me. I don't have to wipe out the natives first. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to Christopher Columbus this. It's already done for you. <laughs> um, I just don't feel. I feel dead inside every time I'm I'm looking out in the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. Maybe the other people who come here. So it's here... a wide barren. Is it like desertous? Is it uh... there? Well, there's no plant life or is it just like anymore dead? because it's just like a like a salty landscape. It's more salty, I guess. There's no plant life either. Well, it's barren. 
because of what happened, yeah. Mm. Mm. There used to be more life. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's the perfect place to die. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to look for a way to abandon this place, but not before... Yeah, because uh, you also have to repair your ship. Not before using the computer to generate an ad for Bongo Bongo Land at this location. That's... Uh, telling people to come here immediately. <laughs> That's so evil! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Uh, no, I won't. I don't care if you want to do that. No, um, I'm not going to do that. Um, you do... There is one more note about the notes. Uh, you do notice that the from what you can tell about the data, the last three days of those records, like after the like between the ritual and it not and it happening obviously because he announced that the ritual would happen three days later from what you can tell those three days have actually been actively purged from the they were tampered with and purged from the record mm. so that means somebody probably messed with the records purposefully Can I look up anything else about Dark Viscuous? Uh, Vitiate? Viscuous? Uh. <laughs> What's great is that he knows about this character, too. You just know that the person who has told you about this character hates him, though. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So. I'm gonna let you do some, like, mind guessing of, like, what's been going I'm gonna kind of give you mind some. Mind guessing. It's my favorite kind. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's better than vocal guessing. <laughs> so he wants you to critically think about your actions first <laughs> before yeah. blurting out an answer. Yeah. So from what you can piece together, more than likely this ritual, uh, Vitiate was somehow the only survivor. Because obviously, who would, who tampered with the records after, for those three days? Um, not that I mean, it probably wasn't that scientist who kept meticulous records on purpose. <laughs> you know, but computers are interesting creatures. You can write programs that have them go back and auto destroy files. Yeah. Um. Really, I gave you everything that you could probably get on Vitiate from the computers. I'm just. I'm kind of feeling like I don't want to do anything with this information. There's yeah. Not, there's not like a golden egg there that I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I should go after it. Um, Except for the home world, but... Yeah, the home... Really nice you might want to save that for later, yeah. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to store all Plus, these notes on a data pad. All right. Or a data chip or something and take it with me. All right. You, because, uh, I guess now, really, you should just be looking for parts to fix your ship. Because it's... Uh, or, you know, like a rocket pogo stick or something? <laughs> You know, the gravity like on this planet, <laughs> an actual cross <crop> rocket. <laughs> yeah, you know, because somehow you gotta get off. Because I'm assuming you don't want to be on a planet that's slowly killing you. I don't know. Depends on my mood. <laughs> <laughs> well, God, I didn't realize. You know, his 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 mood is as crazy as his force powers. <laughs> I mean. Okay, yeah, let's go back to the hallway, go down the stairs, and try to go down the... Or, no, you know, let's check the computer for if there's anywhere I can locate some parts. Alright. Or equipment. Yeah, it's not too hard or to... Or anything of tremendous value, like if there's a tech that's on this planet that's awesome. Yeah, it's not too hard to figure out, like... Let's plunder this place, there's nobody to stop me. Alright, well, while you're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and cut away, because we've been with you for half an hour, so... Okay. So, I think it's a good... Join me on this place. <laughs> I mean, Asen does have a tracker on the ship. Because <laughs> Bongo Bongo didn't take the tracker off that one. <laughs> Alright, so, where we left you guys off... Well, you off. <laughs> the rest of the party. You guys were on Dantooine still. You guys were making your way to the uh, old Jedi Enclave. Because you guys wanted to explore that. Because you already solved most of Dantooine's problems, so you just wanted to explore the Enclave now. Right. Also, we, we did clear out that cave, right? Uh, yeah. So you can actually get some credits for that, too. Sweet. Uh, whenever you talk to the whoever's in charge about that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Zeron, because he's still the chief of the... Right on. 
All right, so as you make your way to the towards the Enclave ruins, you kind of come across the salvage camp because you've been hearing about the salvagers and all that. So you come across their camp. Do you want to interact with any of them, or do you kind of just want to... I don't think I have any reason to interact with them, so let's go ahead and keep going. All right. Blink them. <laughs> the verb fill in the blank. So as you get your, um, so as you're getting closer, you, uh, let me get to where, let's see, uh, Cre- uh, Crea will speak up, and she'll say, so do you, do you feel it? The wound on this world, it is centered here. Do I feel it? You can kind of feel it. Yeah. Uh, if we succeed in gathering the Jedi, they will come to this place, and if those Jedi are slain then all that remains of the Order shall be drawn here as well. Hmm. Mitras asks, so what will, when will this happen? And Kray says, well, we will know when the time comes. Kray loves to speak in her omin- ominous voice. <laughs> Can we stop with the cryptic talk and, you know, be straightforward? What do you want? What's going on? <laughs> Also, isn't there something about her that you guys wanted to confront last week, or are you saving that for later? I guess I'll save that for later when when the party's actually here to talk about it. Because I know there was something that, at the very least, Jeff wanted to confront her on. (laughs) I didn't know if you guys wanted to do that as a party, or... I think we should do that as a party, and specifically when Jeff is here. Okay. So just as you were about to enter the ruins... Uh, Because there's, like, the two entrances, like, if you, well, you've never been here, but uh, Senna kind of can lead you guys because she's been here. And so, there's the two entrances, but one of them is obviously blocked off uh, with, like, rubble and stuff that have kind of just collapsed on it over time. Uh, So, the other entrance, as you're getting close, uh, you see a bunch of scavengers running out. uh, And you can hear the leader complaining uh, that they've lost one of theirs. And that they had lost, that that person had lost a bag holding everything. She's just like, man, if it wasn't for him. Uh, do you want to interact with them? Or? Sure. What did you happen to lose? Maybe I can help you. Uh, she's like, well, we lost all our gear because of the idiot. He, he he wanted to hold our stuff. He, he was like, we brought him in last minute. Uh, that's my dad. Uh, we brought him in last minute because he said he knew the way through the path, and we gave him that in the bag after, when we ran into these creatures. Uh, but I don't want to train you. I don't want the competition to know what's going on down there. Because she, she thinks she thinks that you're scavengers as well. Can I interject for just one second? Mm-hmm. What's your force rating? Ten. Hmm. <laughs> so what the one look like? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the interesting about your force power. It doesn't really matter what your force rating is because you'll do crazy things without without trying. I was just joking. Yeah. So by having a force rating of one, you are still potentially stronger than I am at a force rating ten. It's just you're not trained is really the only right story reason why it's there. Yeah. So a Yoda is like what a point five. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, fifty. But <laughs> yeah, Yoda's probably fifty. Yeah. Um, so as you make your, uh, so you, get, I can guess, and you go ahead and just go in at this point because she's being rude. Oh yeah, I was like, well, I was gonna help you, but oh well, toodles. Um, so as you, so you kind of explore the area. I'm gonna look, kind of guide you through, and you're exploring these ruins, and there's a bunch of doorways. So it depends. You're going down the hall and. You're not really running into anything dangerous yet, despite all these warnings. Uh, the first thing you notice when you walk in is like this, the fountain that used to be there. Uh, it's kind of dried out. Um, and like three different pathways that you can take. Hmm. So where do, where do we go, Santa? Well, it depends what we're looking for here. I mean... Out of game, what did you guys really come here for? I don't remember. It's been two weeks and I've slept since then. <laughs> yeah, I don't know uh, where you wanted. I guess the if you want to go to the 
archives is probably where you want to go, knowing you. Yeah, that's probably where I'd want to go. All right, so then you could go either left or right to get to it. Is it really just that big and it loops around? Yeah, it loops around. Sure. You can't really go through the middle one because it kind of it's one of those like center things, and then mm. yeah. So we'll do that then. Yeah, because um, either way, it gets there because the the central point in that loop is the archives. So. Uh, so as you make your way through that way, you uh, eventually make it to the archives. Uh, it looks from what you can see, a lot of the creatures have already been killed by the scavengers before you. Uh, you can see like these like dead like. Mm, it's hard to really describe them. I can show you a picture. It's probably the best thing. They're like greenish. Crap. I want to say crab-like, but not really. Yeah. You know what? Bug-like. Bug-like. Mantis. Yeah, mantis. But with, like, extra legs. <laughs> so. And they're, like, the size of, like, a small dog. I won't bother it if it don't bother me. <laughs> well, a lot of them are dead already. It's okay. I won't bother it if it don't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> So, you go in there, and you open the door and immediately see somebody in there. And he just looks at you, and he, he bows towards you guys. Were you expecting this? No, uh, I, 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 I was just being respectful towards a uh, fellow, uh, well, to uh, Jedi. Hmm. <clears throat> Mitra speaks up and is like, so who are you? Because <clears throat> I'm assuming that would have been your question anyways. Yeah. Uh, well, I am a historian and scientist working for the Republic. Although, uh, I'm certain my contemporaries would judge me more, uh, historian than scientist. So, what brings you to this place? Well, like you, I was looking for some trace of the Jedi. I had heard mention that one of the Jedi Masters had gone, uh, here, but I found no trace of them. Didn't we find him? Well, I mean, that's not the only reason I'm here. The other reason was the ruins of the Jedi Enclave, and uh, once I arrived, I felt it was necessary to stay to protect what's left. <coughs> well, are you only trying to protect the archives, or are you trying to protect the entire structure? Well, as a historian, uh, artifacts and stuff like that come first and foremost for me, but... Uh, Unfortunately, the um, much had been taken from the Enclave already by both raiders and others. Uh, so I'm just kind of trying to preserve what I can at this point. Um, but uh, these thefts, um, they had to be done by someone who knew the Enclave well. I suspect the Jedi themselves took some of the holocrons and records, but I don't know why. Perhaps it, it had key secrets that they needed to to get to combat the uh, Sith Triumvirate. Maybe. I mean, um, especially in the case of Holocrons, I mean, Holocrons would probably be vital in that uh, with all the knowledge that's probably in them, because although I think, from what I know, Dantooine's not the only site where some Holocrons have gone missing. Would you happen to have any holocrons that I could have access to. Well, unfortunately, all the ones here have already been taken, or they've either been taken by raiders or the Jedi themselves that were here. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if even some of the Sith managed to get their hands on some of them. Uh, more so than the Jedi themselves, though, I fear the loss of their history. So, have you found anything intriguing reading through these archives? Maybe something to, to uh, help combat what's going on? Well, uh, from what I've been able to discover, despite the troubles of the Jedi Civil War, there are those among the Republic who still favor the Jedi and such. So, as long as Onderon remains within the Republic or Empire, it doesn't matter which one, and as long as their the efforts on Telos are, uh, are successful for their reconstruction efforts, that's all that really matters. Um, 
unfortunately, both the Republican Empire are so fragile right now uh, that Telos is important because its success will determine whether or not other dead worlds will receive the same reconstruction efforts. Uh, if Telos is rebuilt and made habitable again, it will affect a string of worlds along the rim. Uh, Onderon, strangely enough, was unaffected by the Jedi Civil War, despite being affected by the Mandalorian Wars. It's almost as if uh, Malak didn't want to attack it back when he was Malak and not Alec, as he... Um, <clears throat> its resources and positions on the rim made it a vital line and guard post against outer rim attacks, which you would think that would be the first place to attack, but I guess not. Uh, it is the only world in the Republican Empire still capable of seeding ecosystems into other dead worlds, too, because of Onderon's wildlife, uh, the most aggressive in the known galaxy. Merely placing some of those beasts on target worlds will guarantee their habitation for years to come. Uh, the Jedi are important, though, because of the symbol they represent. Right. Uh, as much damage as their reputation took during the Sith War and the Jedi Civil War, there are still many whom they serve as an example. Plus, there have been times in the past where a single Jedi has been enough to change the face of a world, or a galaxy even. I suppose I still believe that might be possible, despite the betrayal of many Jedi against the Republic. I must concede that as a figurehead, they do serve a vital role. Mm. Mitra will uh, kind of pitch in. Uh, you kind of look familiar to me. Uh, the, the scholar kind of shrugs it off and is like, Well, I imagine in your travels of the galaxy, you have seen many people. Uh, faces tend to blur together after a time. I ask him to take my hand. <laughs> uh, he says, uh, excuse me? I need to take your hand. Is there a reason? So, I can swap information with you. I'll tell him, uh, basically what I'm getting at is that I'm going to give him relevant information that we know... He wants you to plug to... into his USB and download that shit. <laughs> right? So, uh, he says, I... I Walk and touch me, bro. He's like, I have read on this Force ability. <laughs> I'm not sure if I want to. <laughs> danger, strange, stranger, danger. <laughs> What's the fear? Well, I believe that if a person wishes to keep their own secrets, they should be allowed to. What is your name? Mikhail. Does Mitra perk up at that name at all? Mm-mm. Mm. Do, you, do you really want him? Yes, I want to know. <laughs> he says, he looks over and he's realizing that you're really getting irritated by him not doing this. So he's just like, fine, I'll do this on... One condition that you will know when we shake. Okay. Alright, so he reaches out. Shakes. You know that he was once a, a potential Jedi. Mm -hmm. He was actually on the Dantooine. He used to... He actually was at this academy when he was a potential. Uh, and he was... This was like during the Mandalorian... A little bit before the Mandalorian Wars when he was here and he had watched Mitra uh, as a younger student okay. and he had actually looked up to her he had been to listen to her and he had wanted you know from what his feelings are that he had once wanted to be trained by her but then she left for the Mandalorian Wars so he decided that he should leave the order as well hmm because he felt that if she, if his hero left, that he should leave. And I share with him and, who, and, who I am and yeah. uh, what I've been through personally and uh, what our party is trying to accomplish. Well, you can tell that. You can actually read that he was planning to join. Cool. Um, and the one condition he gives you is that Mitra, he, he will tell Mitra at his own time. That's fine. Um... He just doesn't need her to know, because this is just more 
stuff. That's I, I basically irrelevant now. I mean, I mentally tell him that y- you can keep plenty of secrets with with good old me. <laughs> All right. So that so you guys let go and you're back at it. Uh, Mitra says, so I guess since there's nothing here, I guess we should start heading out now. I asked, I, I said, I, I mentioned kind of in the same way, like, well, since pretty much the Ravagers have picked what more or less is useful in this area, would you like to come with us? Uh, Mikael speaks up and he says, yeah, that, uh, I mean, that makes sense. Uh, I do, so you, you gave him all of the stuff that's been going on so far? Yeah, he, he got, he's got the whole rundown. He's putting something together in his head, uh, and he says... In fact, I think I know what's been going on with some of the holocrons that I was talking to you about before. And that is? Well, from what you shared with me, uh, Atris might have taken some of them. Is that the bitch with no arms? No, 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 that's the cold heart one. Oh. <laughs> the one that had the holocrons on, oh. on Telos. The ones that she wouldn't let any of you in to that room. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but because you shared that, he now can put two and two together and be like... Because he did mention that he thinks Jedi took some of them. Yeah. And so he's actually formulating a theory now because um, of what he knows. Right. And he says, well, from what I can tell, we need to kind of work on... I think she's trying to formulate a plan on how to stop Scion herself. The, right. the triumvirate. And that's why she took the holocrons. Because like you said, probably taking the holocrons to formulate a plan. And so it kind of makes sense that that might be why she took them. Mm. I mean, we have we have access to, to one holocron. Um, but you have a holocron? One. Oh yeah, he would know that because you shared that. I, I'm making it verbal so that, you know, other people don't be like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, because then it's just like jumping conversation. Yeah. And he's just like, yes, uh, the Ludo Crush one, that is a dangerous thing. I'm surprised you guys have not uh, gotten hurt yet. Yeah. Other than <laughs> other than the droid here, pointing to B9. <laughs> uh, he's okay. <laughs> he's a tough cookie. Yeah. Um, and he says, well... Going into some of that stuff, I don't know much about force bond and bonds, unfortunately. Um, I'm trying to think of a way to kind of disconnect, because I've never really... I've heard of ways to deal with Scion, but I don't know much... Like, like in Mitra's case, you know, because right. technically her force abilities are were, from what you shared. Yeah. But now she has them again. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that's possible. I don't know. Because that... It's unheard of. Let's get back to the ship and we can figure things out. Right. So you all make your way back. With your new friend. Right. A historian, which is pretty good for the party. Right. I mean, it's kind of good to have one knowledge guy that's like, studies everything about your culture and is like, well, I can tell you this and this and this and this. <laughs> right. Although there will be some gaps in his knowledge. Cause right, because not all history is, is complete. Which is what he's afraid about, too. That's like his goal is to try to piece everything together. Mm-hmm. Um, based on what he's he's dressed as right now, does he look like he needs, he's, he's, he's in need of cash and, and or funding? Oh, no, 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 no. You, um, part of that memory stuff that you got from him also is that he wor- he's working for the Republic, which he did state. Um, so he's actually being given money. You actually know who he's working for, too. He's working directly under uh, Saul Carith, the nice. admiral that, okay. that Flo used to okay. fly yeah. under. <laughs> the one that, <laughs> that shanghaied him into working for him. <laughs> All right. So, uh, when you return to the ship, he'll immediately start studying the other worlds that you guys have already visited, trying to find the connection. 
Uh, he looks over and he says, um, can we return to any of these other worlds? So I, I need to figure out the connection. Because there has to be a connection. Which world do you want to go to first? Do you want to go and see... Out of character, what's that bitch's name? <laughs> I think we should deal with her last. Okay. I think that's not... I, I'm, I'm more concerned about the where the Jedi, the other Jedi have been found. Okay. Because... From... I see a pattern with how Malik, back when he was Darth Malik, how he chose to attack the Republic, and that he attacked to make... It appears that he was trying to make the Republic stronger in his attack, strangely enough. As if he was preparing for something else. Unfortunately, though, that pattern kind of ends once Scion took over. Uh, Scion kind of just willy-nilly attacked, from what I can... From what I've pieced together. Hmm. And what's interesting is that all these worlds where you guys have found the Jedi Masters, mm -hmm. ex excluding Narshida, all have a connection to the Mandalorian or the Jedi Civil War. Hmm. So what makes Narshida so different then? I think that one was, is just a weird catalyst. The one off piece in the puzzle. Hmm. Um... At this point, though, uh, T3 will roll up, and he'll be beeping. What do you say? Uh, you said T3. Mitra says, um... No, no, I can understand. Oh, okay, you can, you can, yeah. you speak binary? Yeah. Okay. He speaks Gonkian, too. Yeah. Then you understand that he was, uh, telling you guys that Kelborn sent a message, uh, the Mandalorian from Duxon, mm. and, and that, uh, he put, he asks if you want to see the message. Yes. Kelborn appears in a hologram and he says, uh, that Jedi you had, uh, talked to had said that you need to return right now, uh, on Onderon, the Jedi. Uh, he got into contact with us and I agree that you might want to head back here, uh, head to Duxon first. It's probably the best place to head to. The gruff old guy? Is that the, the guy on the hologram? Uh, it's one of, it's one of the Mandalorians that are under Candorous. Uh, I see. It's yeah, basically the guy he left in charge while you guys were gone, because Candorous went with you. Okay. Uh, well, okay, guys. I guess we should we should high high step it on out of here. Yeah, sounds like it's kind of important. Says me too. <laughs> All right. So, are you guys heading straight to? I guess I guess you're heading straight to Onderon. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're gonna well, get I some. Mean, pay get get. get I mean, Duxon. Yeah. Get the money thing first because we've cleared out an entire cave that we've that's right yeah so go ahead and get uh five thousand from that sweet i'll just put that as a and problem. zaren says thanks for helping out not a problem and thank you for joining us or is that no that's not zaren no 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 I'm names yeah Con... no. Con bottle. mikhail joined you yeah mikhail all right, so we're gonna go ahead and jump back to Bongo, because we're gonna say some time. It takes a little time to fly between planets, and since there's nobody to role play off of other than the NPCs, right? <laughs> uh. Only downside, <laughs> unless you want to do that confrontation with Kraya now. No, I'm good. How many days passed by? Uh, it's gonna be three more, which means because of. Space flight? Uh, I mean, you guys already had that first payday already, I so... Uh, I'm gonna have to keep track of these new, this new month. Okay. Alright, back to Bongo Bongo. Oh, uh, let me scroll through the notes. So, we're gonna assume that during that time passage, you did find the parts. Just because okay. it's an empty planet. It's, it's not gonna be hard to find parts. Except that it's an empty planet, but okay. Well, empty in the sense of life. Nobody's gonna stop I'll you. I'll just go down to the uh, old. You pull it. Yeah, nobody's gonna. <laughs> nobody's gonna be like, "Hey, where you? What are you doing?" You mean the old parking lot? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're well, all. Do I fix my ship, or can I just take any other ship? There's no other ships. Uh, just parts. Yeah, just a lot of parts. Okay, weird, but I'll take it. 
Well, because of things that happened. That weren't Four documented. Reasons. Four reasons. Stuff that wasn't documented or stuff that was documented and then <laughs> deleted. <laughs> I'm going to um, search my ship for a uh, tracking device. Mm-hmm. Oh, now he thinks about doing that. <laughs> yeah, I think I thought about it in the last campaign, but you said I couldn't find it. Yeah, you couldn't the last time you looked for it on this ship. I figured enough time to pass so I can try it again. What do I roll? Uh, let's see, that's going to be a perception. Which you have a yellow and a green on. Three horseshoes. You do not find anything. Haha. <laughs> In fact, you are convinced, now that you've looked over it twice, that there is no tracking device. Bullshit. <laughs> no, you got a threat. Which is the only reason... You got, like, this Imperial symbol thing, which is a threat. Which is the only reason I, I'm saying that. And you didn't have a horseshoe to counter it. <laughs> I thought I had three horseshoes. You did have three horses. Oh, then you do counter it, and you still don't find it, though. Okay. Man, Aeson hit it good this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, last time he, it was... One of the big flashing button in <laughs> the pilot seat. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> no, it's hidden behind the wheel. <laughs> you gotta like, actually take the ship apart to find it. <laughs> Alright, so where are you going to head now that you've got your ship back in order? Plot twist, it's a thruster. <laughs> the whole thruster is... <laughs> so you can't take off unless it's there. I guess I'm going to leave this godforsaken should have been Bongo Bongo Land planet because you decided that's where people go to die. <laughs> I didn't decide it, it existed. You just happened to land here. No, I'm... Yeah, I know, I know, I know you. I know, I'm joking back. Don't worry. So where you want to head? I was DMing and I wanted my players to not be there. I'd say the same thing. <laughs> so where do you want to head? You have the whole galaxy open to you. As long as you can actually get there. <laughs> well, I don't know much about this timeline or what's going on in Star Wars. Well, I mean, now, if so there's... I mean, interesting. Honestly, the only real hook you have is, is, that planet. is that planet, or you could go to Naboo. There is stuff I wrote down for you to do in there if you really want to go home. Reattempt to Naboo. Or you can, I mean, I will say from the, because you did get the astrogation chart for that, uh, the Sith homeworld, it is the closer planet. I'm going to go to Naboo and try and convince everybody to move to the Sith planet. <laughs> We're going to invade the Sith ancient home world. That's it. I'm going to go home. Well, first off... I kind of want him to pass this astrogation chart. If I'm going to do that, then the first thing I need to do is go visit Recon, the ancient home world, and see what's going on there. Okay. That sounds like a plan. Sure. Yeah, I'm going to go Recon, and then I'm going to go home to Naboo, become the new Bombad General. You're going to do what Vichy did? You're going to, like... Come up with like you're gonna fear monger them into no. attacking. No, <laughs> no, no. Just be like there's a, there's a whole planet that isn't a puddle of water <laughs> that we can live on, and that humans aren't suddenly appearing on. Yeah, and we can avoid the whole prequel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as long we'll as we leave Jar Jar Binks behind, that way everything else can happen the right way. <laughs> You'll leave, like, two people behind so that way they can repopulate yeah. Naboo while you guys go to this new world. Yeah, and that's the plan that least, you see in the previous. I would see at least ten, ten families so that you can actually have a real population growth. And We're going to colonize the ancient Sith homeworld, and then if anybody tries to invade us, we'll just be like, Hey, you over Siths. Fuck off. And then they might buy it. I mean, you have force power, so, I mean... Although your people see it as, like, magic. Because the Force isn't really a known thing yet on that Alright, I'm going to go at least check out the Sith homeworld and see if it's still occupied. Alright. It's ancient enough. Give me Hopefully a... Hopefully they've all fucked off by now. <laughs> you have a yellow. For what? Astrogation. So that way you can... Bang and a horseshoe. Yep, you're good. 
And then, of course, you got a pilot there, so. Uh, yellow and a green for piloting in space. How many checks to not get lost with me? Oh! oh He's my shooting God. blanks! <laughs> I crashed right back to where I came from! He's like, shooting what? blanks. Oh, you're good. They blank two on this end. Autopilot. Yeah, the autopilot got you covered. <laughs> Asen had a good autopilot built in. <laughs> two blanks. <laughs> I prematurely hyperdrive into a Death Star <laughs> and destroy it. So you warp thousands of years into the future? <laughs> yep, that was that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I hit 88 miles an hour before I had to <laughs> the warp drive. <laughs> so you could go back to the future? <laughs> Go to the Star Wars parts I know. The movies. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you make go it. Save Qui-Gon, Jim, kill Anakin. You know, those things. <laughs> so you basically want to do the Star Wars version of killing Hitler. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> well then, wouldn't you want to just kill Palpatine? Because that's the real problem. Oh, I don't know. It depends on what my limited knowledge is. That's true. Well, you're from the past, so you would have no knowledge. Right. <laughs> So I need to go to the future first. <laughs> you gotta go to the future first, learn the things of the past. Mm -hmm. Although, your future... Yeah, time travel. <laughs> Anyways. Time travel retcon stuff. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, so you make it. Uh, you see the planet before you, and it's this fierce storm world uh, raining. So Jupiter, the eye of Jupiter. Except almost the entire planet. <laughs> Uh, you do see actually a civilization, like an uh, actual bustling civilization as you're landing. Well, I don't want to land yet. Okay. I was, <laughs> I'm assuming you're not going in, like, in for a landing, but, you like... you think I've been detected? No. Okay, I want to do some long-range scanning. Okay. And like, from how so how far are we talking? Like, you're not even going atmosphere yet? No, no atmosphere. Okay. Orbital. Okay. I don't want to be detected. There are, like, you can see, like, other ships coming in and out. It's kind of like a... But, like, on the other side. Remember, you're working in space, so you got that extra dimension. Okay, I'm going to launch a couple probes around the other side, around the planet, so that way I can get some good signal and readouts. Okay. Probes. All right, so what are you looking for exactly? I want to know what's going on here. Just generals? Like... Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a Sith world. Uh, there's an emperor. So, are you looking for is this? Like the current seat of power for the empire. For this, or is this just like a an old, old, old home world that uh, isn't this, really that? It's current. Anymore? It's a current seat of em seat of oh, authority. So I'm like the heart of the empire right now. An empire. <laughs> Somebody's feeling salty. <laughs> but you said it was yes hidden. It was lost. No, the world itself is hidden and or lost, but that empire still is, is recognized as an existing empire. But it's an empire. How do people not know where the seat of the empire is? Because people... I'm, I'm, just, I'm a little confused because you said it was like a lost home world. It, yes, but that guy found it, remember? But if billions of people that live on this planet know it's here, it's not really lost, is it? Not who, okay. Okay. Lost? Do you want me, Do you want me to put some pieces together for you? Yeah. To, to whom was it lost, and why is it important? Okay. So what you can piece together is that somehow, after the ritual that Vitiate did, he led people, any survivors, here. So himself. Well, yeah. According to you. Well, there are other planets that were under okay. the Sith control at the time. All right. But he probably led survivors there and claimed. Basically, he claimed that the Jedi genocided his planet and that he became basically a Moses. He killed them all. Yes. And claimed to save them. Yeah. And basically, he claimed, he basically pulled a Moses and said, let's go to this promised land that I found. Oh, my God. But I have proof against all that? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to log into the World Wide Web. <laughs> You're going to upload all of these files. But from what you can tell, it's not going to matter because the guy 
I mean, this was a thousand. This was thousands of. This was a thousand years ago. But it might abate some current hatred of the Jedi. Peace, man. I mean, you can you can throw that out there. Peace, not war. Flower child. <laughs> I mean, at the very least, you can try to throw that out there. Where you put a flower in the barrel of a gun and the guy just. <laughs> <laughs> Even though that didn't historically. So, do you want to make yourself known by blasting this? Because if you do no, blast I this... I want to do some research into any signals I can interrupt and see if I can find out what their current state of affairs is. So, like, who's in charge currently? Current so on. politics, current geopolitics. Who are they at war with? Why? What are the proclaimed reasons, anyways? Alright. So, from what you can tell, the leader is not Vitiate anymore. Because the guy's name is uh, Venar. Is the current leader, the emperor? He has a council, a dark council that has twelve members on it. You just throw the word "dark" on everything. I got gotcha. you. It, it's basically his. The Legion of Doom. It's basically his. It's basically like uh, his. The, his cabinet. The Secretary of Dark yeah. Interior. It's like a, it's like his, <laughs> it's a, it's essentially his cabinet. Yeah. The Secretary of Dark Treasury. Um. So are you going to, like, try to get more, like, personal stuff on these people? The Supreme Dark Court. Because <laughs> if you want to... see all these people going, like, It is proclaimed that we are all dark. Yes! Emo! Yes! Dark! Go ahead and, uh... <laughs> a bunch of emo goth kids. <laughs> go ahead and give me a computers, which They're is your green. Oh. Sorry. Hey, you did good. You passed. I'm counting it because it passed. <laughs> um, so you actually get into some of the more in-depth knowledge about who's in charge currently, and you get some names. Uh, you pull up a uh, name, Nyrus is one of the council member uh, council members, and also a... Um, what's the name of that guy? I have it in my notes. It doesn't matter. He was killed recently. Um, so actually, there's a gap in the council currently. Now, with any population, any government system, any society, there are going to be those naysayers, those... Um, Against, uh, yeah. Hold on, what's the word I'm looking for? That's always happens to me. I'm going to have Alzheimer's in 20 years. Um, <clears throat> dissenters. Yes. Yeah, can I find them? No more information on them. Funny enough. Who are the known dissenters? Funny enough, there are five council members that are against the Emperor. Did they advertise that? Mm. Would I just know that with a Google search? Not vocally. <laughs> okay. You know this because of the computer systems that you're getting into. You're okay. getting some older communications and stuff that were secretly sent between parties. Uh, you're actually getting a little bit deeper. I'm going to contact the five of them. Well, All there's only four now, because one of them is okay. the person I mentioned that was dead. Okay, I'm going to contact the remaining four okay. anonymously in encoded and encrypted message, saying that I have uh, evidence regarding uh, past no. events mm -hmm. uh, between uh, Darth... Well, I'm not going to actually... I'm just going to say I have evidence... That would challenge, uh... Current, oh my God. current rule. What's the freaking words I'm thinking of? It's, it's very important I use the right word. <clears throat> challenge the accepted history of, okay. yeah. of uh, Jedi versus um, Sith. Sith relations. Okay. And then you're going to send, like, and the information... To contact me if they're interested. And then you're sending the information you got on the Thema? No, not yet. Oh, okay. So you're just saying, hey, I have this I'm information. Out first. Yeah, you're saying, I have this information. If you want it, call me back, essentially. Uh, okay, but... Hold on. Because they might immediately suspect that, oh, this, oh, this is an insider trying to get us to reveal who we really are. <laughs> so i got to offer them something for a code... Hmm. I never really thought that how I would do this. Well, you also didn't know you would have to do this. Right. Um. <clears throat> I 
This is great. <laughs> Man, so many things that are being passed. Yeah, I'm going to send that and I'm going to let them know that if they're interested, they need to uh, reply to my message and I'll send them uh, information on where to meet me next. And then I'll do like a hijinks trail of like they show up and then they get a clue to go to the next place and I do that to test to see if they're being followed and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when I feel like I'm confident that they're alone and separated I'll lead them to the information but not like first hand mm -hmm. I'm just going to expose them to it I guess we'll cut back to him so that way they can have time to reply to you okay um, actually no one of them reply somebody replies to you right away okay first person that replies to you is actually not a member of the dark council you get a immediate message from a somebody who's calling himself scourge Oh, that's not somebody I want to meet. <laughs> Is that his username or his real name? That's his name. So the guy immediately responds to me and says, My name is Scourge. And he says, I actually have some information you may want in return. I Is my connection secure? Yes. Am I being tracked? No. Okay. He's, uh, in his message, he says, I actually know that... I actually know the location of a Jedi on this planet. Who is being held prisoner. Who could be helpful. Does this guy have meta knowledge? <laughs> Just a random, as far as this guy knows, because I didn't send him the message, right? He, Did he, intercept he intercepted. Okay. <clears throat> he, let's just say shows up. Uh, let's just say he yeah. message gets sent to one of the four dissenting leaders and says, "I have knowledge or potential important knowledge on Jedi Sith relations, challenging the historical narrative." Contact me if interested in Mr. Scourge. <laughs> Auto. It's like, bloop, as soon as I send it, like, he's already back on it. Uh, well, he was just at the right place at the right time. I'm gonna ignore him. Okay. <laughs> For now. Okay. Guy named Scourge. Says, there's a Jedi down here. Maybe you want to come get it. That's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. It is. <laughs> Okay. Yep, not going on to the... <laughs> <laughs> not going to the Empire Sith home world surrounded by Siths and Empire supporters to talk to a guy named Mr. Scourge. <laughs> He's actually Lord Scourge. He's actually a lord. Oh my god. No thanks. <laughs> oh, but you'll talk to a Nyrus or, you know... Uh, You'll talk to people on the council for this Sith Emperor, but okay. If, if they're supposed to dissenters. Yeah. Yeah. Why am I going to tell a Sith guy that I have information challenging his narrative? <laughs> oh, a trap, you say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, well, while you're waiting on the rest of the replies, I guess we'll go back to Bardmas. So you finally return to Duxon. Kelborn kind of just sets you guys down and quickly explains that Kavar had managed to get safe passage for the for you guys from Queen Talia to return to Onderon. But, unfortunately, that offer might not be good anymore. So the morning that you guys arrived back on Duxon, unfortunately, Vaklu, uh, the general guy that was opposing Queen Talia, mm -hmm. unfortunately, he met with the Onderonian War Council and declared Talia had committed treason. So currently there's a civil war that has fallen on uh, Isis. Vaklu's side doesn't have as much support from the people, but uh, the Sith Triumvirate and their assassins have begun to make their way to Onderon to help Vaklu. No surprise. <laughs> uh, the Mandalorians do believe, though, that Talia won't last uh, the night uh, because of that. Uh, Duxon has also been receiving some Sith visitors uh, recently, making their own base of operations on the moon itself. Right. 
uh, the moon you guys are now on. So despite this, uh, uh, so uh, Kreia will say that you guys should probably split up to ensure that uh, Talia is successful. Basically, split forces attack both fronts. Uh, Mandalore disagrees. He thinks that we should, you guys should just confront the single issue head on and deal with the other one after. Mm. Is there any debate as to what you think? I personally uh, am going to side on the Mandalorians uh, on Mandalore's uh, idea, proposal what have you. Mm -hmm. um, that it be a single force? Yeah. A united front is a strong front. Mitra speaks up and says, well, I kind of disagree. Where are you coming from? Um, well, there's a lot of us anyways. I mean, I think... Because the problem is... Well, where are you thinking we should attack first? I wasn't thinking of attack. I was thinking of get representatives from both parties together to discuss this out. And see where both parties are actually coming from. Well, and then we can piece together. Unfortunately, I agree. I would agree with that option normally, but I think, unfortunately, with how things are currently going along, we might be too late for that to have worked out. It sounds like Vaklu doesn't want to change his position, and it appears he's backed up by those who would not allow him to, even if he did. Hmm. While I agree with your stance, I don't think that stance can be taken anymore. I see. Well? Uh, I do have an idea of who could lead the ducks in half of the defense, and I do think that you should be with me when we go to Onderon as, our, as part of our team. I also think Senna should join us, as should B9. Yes, I can. I concur. Basically, the core team. The core, the non NPC, the main player character should be on Onderon. Right. Is basically her argument. And I'm guessing there's no. At this point, wouldn't Asen be more apt to taking over for B9, considering his weakened state? Uh, well, B9's not horrible yet at this point. Yeah. I mean, I'm just considering the whole cancer thing. Well, since they're not, he's still got two years, well, a year and 11 months left. Right. So, it's not like he's falling apart yet. <laughs> I'd say within the last three months he'll be like that, but... Yeah. Um... They both could go theoretically right now, since technically yeah. they're both on NPC alert. <laughs> mm -hmm. So they could both join on Onderon together. Right. Although he probably wouldn't allow that. He'd have somebody stay on the ship. Yeah. Knowing Jeff, he'll probably send Asen to Onderon and he'll stay on the ship. Yeah. Okay. So that so Asen's with you guys. Cool. So you, Asen, Senna, and Mitra and... Uh, so Mitra discusses a plan of how the party should probably be split. Dustal will lead the defense on du on Duxon. Okay. Uh, and the rest of the party kind of doesn't care how they'll be split. Um, Mandalore, HK, Hanhar, and Leela will go with Dustal. Everybody else will be with your team. So you got Mitra, Kreia, Mikael, uh... Try and think who else is left. Uh, there's a lot of NPCs to keep track of. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, everybody else is with you. Okay. And since this is broken out into civil war, who's going where? Should I go toward Talia's front and and you know have things united there? What, what what's going on? What's well, right now the plan is that you guys. So after, now that you've figured out who's splitting up with who, um, so they send off the Duxon team to go off and do their thing. 
Um, meanwhile, uh, okay, I gotta make some quick notes. All right. Oh. Okay. So basically uh who was left? What's his name? Kelborn. The Mandalorian. He says that the plan is for you guys to ride in on a basilisk war droid down to Isis. Uh, and this will be used against them as one of... So basically you guys are going to ride on that in order to kind of make your way into save the day. Because at this point everything's going down. Uh, plan is to try to get into the palace and save who's left. Uh, basically, hopefully, Queen Talia is still there. Hopefully, you can reach her and uh, Master Kavar. If you can get both of them, then you can probably deal with Vaklu and whoever's left. Because more than likely, Vaklu himself is dealing with Talia. And if you can get rid of Vaklu in some way, then you can probably end the war. <laughs> Does that sound like a... Sounds good. Let's go and try and find Talia. All right. So, uh... Let's see. All right, time to fight some things. It's actually time for combat. Yeah. So, you see a bunch of Sith and a bunch of soldiers and a bunch of creatures on your way there. Uh, you remember the Bomas things that I sent a picture of a while mm -hmm. back? They, so you can see that the Sith have been are kind of controlling the creatures using like mind tricks and all that. Um, so you can uh, you initially land in like the big open market area, which has been like bombarded and all that. Yes. There you go. Thank you. Um, so it's been like bombarded and. It's definitely not the market you remember when you were first here. Hmm. Uh, and you can see that the main ways have been are kind of clear, but there's like a few Sith here uh, that you can kind of deal with, and they see you as well. Uh, do you want to make the first move? So right now you see about two Sith, uh, six soldiers, and a Boma. Hmm. Well, are they coming at me with with intent to kill? Yes. The lightsabers are already drawn and everything. Yep, because they they've been expecting. Hmm. Especially when you come down on a basculus war droid. Hmm. Which is Mandalorian technology, so they know the Mandalorians are involved now. Mm -hmm. How many are there? Two Sith, six soldiers, and one Boma currently in your way. Perfect. Are you just... I'm going to bind them all. All right. With the intent to break their back. <laughs> Even the poor Boma? Except the Boma. Because honestly, if you get rid of the Sith controlling them, then... Right. So, let's see. I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. <laughs> 16 lights. <laughs> and 2 blacks. <laughs> I think that works. So immediately the Sith and soldiers go, ah, and you can hear the <laughs> of their backs 
and they kind of just collapse. And as soon as they collapse, the boma is like, and it starts to feed on the Sith and soldiers as it's now been freed. Uh, does it swallow them whole, or do they have? Do they slowly like? It's kind of tearing it apart, going into it like a rabid dog. I, I Although it's up, a little bit bigger, so. I walk up. Well, I, I walk up at a safe distance, so I'm not <laughs> ravaged by those damn things, and be like, "This didn't have to go this way." But I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and the Boma kind of looks up at you and, you know, you feel like it's smiling at you, but you don't know. And it kind of runs ahead of you to, and starts to eat more of the enemies ahead of you. <laughs> Freeing its brothers. Good. <laughs> so it's eaten. So you actually meant because of this chain of events, you actually make it along the way with no other issues, because there's 23 other Bomas that get freed. <laughs> so you just hear, ah, who released these things? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and you just kind of hear, like, the dying screams of everybody. As I'm sitting there, like, casually walking into town. <laughs> yeah. I draw my pike and sword. <laughs> so, eventually you make your way to the actual palace. Right. In the palace, you see an old enemy, Tobin. Who's that again? The colonel that works for Baklu. The one who... Enemy? He shot you guys down, ah. and then he was the one that attacked you guys when you had your meeting with Kavar. <laughs> and so... It, it, Force pull... Him to me. <laughs> you also see, along with him, a Sith creature that's trying to get to the queen as the door in front of them is kind of force field shut. Oh, a creature's going after the no, queen? No, after the queen, yeah. Oh, okay, I'm going to fucking snap that bastard's back, too. <laughs> Instead of Tobin? Yeah. Okay. So you get rid of the creature, and the guys look at you, and they're like, oh! Because there were Sith that were kind of controlling it, but not exactly. Right. And then Tobin's like, "Hey, don't don't just be bewildered. Get them. Don't do it." And Tobin starts to shut. You don't want to do that. As those guards start, to I swear to Christ, if you guys come after me, you will horrifically die. <laughs> Tobin quickly shuts the door <laughs> between you guys. What's the door made out of? Uh, it's pretty strong metal. It's not. It's it's going to be anti lightsaber. Um, well, no need for a door when I can just rip the motherfucking thing down. <laughs> uh, Tobin does say, like, after he shuts it, you get, like, a call on, on the little computer right next to the door. Mm -hmm. And you see Tobin, and he says, I'm impressed. I'm impressed you've made it this far, but you are too late. Soon the queen will be dead, and General Vaklu will be the new king. Like hell he will. <laughs> this is no ordinary door between us. The same material is used for the whole of capital class vessels. I'm afraid you will find it quite impregnable. The door might be impregnable, but the walls around it aren't. <laughs> and I click the thing down and click the thing off. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Again. You gotta yeah. hope you have to hope though that this isn't the like a uh, Holocron or, or hollow projector? No, no, no. The type of door, uh, type of wall that holds a up. load bearing wall. Yeah, load bearing. <laughs> I'm going to make a quick check before I go out. <laughs> and we can always that. do a high or low. Yeah, let's do that. All right, high good, low bad. High good. It is a load load bearing wall. Fuck. Okay, I'll still make a hole in it. Okay, just like a, enough to get through? Yeah. Okay, uh, and at this point, Kavar kind of joins you from around the corner, and he's like, oh, there you guys are. Come on in. Uh, and, like, he's coming from, like, one of the corners that were not locked by the door because there were, like, two other paths. Right. Um, and he comes around, and he's like, well, we've been, I figured you would have helped us out this way, but, yeah, sure. Um, Bring the men in, too. <laughs> and so a few soldiers follow him. 
and you guys make your way, and you see Tobin there still like the shield, the shield behind them, so they still haven't made it to Queen Talia. Yeah, uh, uh, I got sixteen light in four black. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna crack their backs, break them. All right, there goes Tobin and everybody else. Yep. All right, and so Kavar's like, well, I guess there's no reason for this door anymore. <laughs> Opens it. <laughs> and so, well, it's not really a door. It's like a f- energy shield type thing, but yeah. Right. Um, so anyways, you guys are now able to get through that. Uh, and so you see uh, Va- uh, Vaklu himself has already gotten there. Um, and he's actually in the middle of fighting uh, Talia. And when you get in there, though, you see, like, the other soldiers for both sides, and neither of them are interfering. So this is obviously some sort of, like, com- like strict combat type thing that's part of their culture. Uh, and they're both kind of talking as they're fighting. Um, and Vaklu says, your time is at an end, Talia. Your people have abandoned you, and now your life is forfeit. Talia adds back, you would destroy everything for your ambitions, Vaklu. The Republic, the Empire, Isis, everything. Uh, and he responds, That is a gross simplification, Talia. Change is a painful process. A price must be paid. But Onderon will have a new destiny. One larger than you could imagine. You're getting careless, Vaklu. One more mistake, and you're the one who will pay the price. Uh, you can hear Vaklu's breaths are becoming more ragged as, uh, as they fight. And then eventually, uh... Because a fight is kind of breaking out between the guards. And, oh, uh, uh, guards are actually fighting now? Yeah. I'm going to sit there and battle meditate on, on Tatya. <laughs> Talia, yeah. Talia. <laughs> so she's obviously winning already, and so this on top of that is kind of inspiring the men around her. Mm-hmm. And so they easily just take out most of the enemy, along with Kavar and Mitra and everybody that's in the party getting involved. Um, and it doesn't take long before Vaklu starts to tr- try to drag himself over to the throne, trying to get away slightly, and four more of his men come from behind it, and he says, Damn you! Your skill with the blade won't save you from my men. Goodbye, Talia. Fire! Uh, Mitra says, Your plan's here in, Vaklu. What? The Jedi lives? But How? You have underestimated what a Jedi is capable of. Vaklu says, Kill her and the queen! Men, quickly! They must not be allowed to live! And, of course, because of your battle meditation... (laughs) They get just maxed out, by the way. (laughs) Yeah. They, they... Everybody, kind of... Everybody but Vaklu's left. And Vaklu is sounding more tired. (sighs) You've won this battle, Talia. But your reign won't be an easy one. The Republic and Empire are sinking ships. You're too attached to them. And Kraya says, He's too dangerous... She's speaking to Talia. He's too dangerous to leave alive. As distasteful as it is, it might be best to silence him forever. Until he's dead, all of Onderon is in peril. Mitra speaks up. And looks at Kray and is like, Although I respect your counsel, Kraya, the decision is the Queen's, not ours. Don't you agree? I'm, gu- I'm guessing at this point you're getting out of your battle meditation. Yeah. Because the battle's over, essentially. So, and uh, do you kind of... You, uh, you hear the this conversation going, do you want to butt in before Vaklu says what he wants to? Uh, well... I would, such a dangerous person, such a radical, who who has done that, done all of this to you because he disagrees with your your way of doing things. I don't know. Uh, this 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 is bound to to be a repeat if he's allowed to live. And I respect and admire your 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 mercy. Uh, on this, on this poor soul, but well, nobody's allowed it yet. Yeah. Uh, Vaklu says, looks over at the Queen, at Talia and says, 
So what will it be, your majesty? Send me to your best detention cell. I will be free within the week, and vengeance will be mine. And Talia says, Are you so certain of my decision, Vaklu? I appreciate the Jedi's counsel, but as monarch, I decree you guilty of treason. The punishment is death, to be carried out immediately. Captain Kadron? And you see the soldiers starting to meet upon in front of her, kind of creating a firing squad. Yeah. And Vaklu starts to look a little more panicked now, realizing what's going on. As he says, Talia, you, you can't. You're, you're too weak. What about my trial? Tal, Talia speaks up. Your whole life has been a trial, Vaklu, but it's over now. You're right. We can't detain you. Too many people are still loyal to you. You left me no real option. Captain Cadron says, Men ready, blasters? Aim. Talia's guards aim their blasters at Vaklu. But you can't. This can't be. Fire! The militia fire in unison. A direct shot at Vaklu. In a flash of bright light from the shots, Vaklu's body collapses to the floor of the palace. Talia takes a breath and says, What is done is done. I don't think the service you have given us can ever be repaid. Oh. <laughs> I must go with Captain Cadron. The fighting must be stopped. I will be back shortly to try and repay you. <laughs> uh, the crisis is over thanks to you and Master Kavar. I believe he'd like to speak to you if you'll excuse me. Before you leave, um, instead of you p repaying me, would you do me the kindness of giving me your hand? All right, so I, with all of this, I impart to her all the wisdom that I've had as Empress um, and what I plan to do with the capitalist empire, as I had it, um, in the future. And I hope that she could use that as, as a representative model on how she should run her planet. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> I will consider this. <clears throat> uh, and she walks away and says, I will still return with an attempt of payment, as you deserve more than you wish. <laughs> All right. So, uh, the queen and her men leave you alone with Kavar. Uh, give me a perception. What's your perception, by the way? Maxed out. Okay, so five yellow. Yeah. Oh. Be good. <laughs> All right. So, eight bangs, two advantages. <laughs> so eight hits. Hits. Yeah. All right. Uh, so you do notice. Uh, Kray is starting to walk off on her own again, uh, but you are unable to keep up if you try to follow. So am I supposed to spe uh, speak with... Well, Kavar and Mitra have already started talking, but you can yeah. join in if you wish. I will go ahead and jump into that conversation. Then. Uh, Kavar says, Huh. I told the other masters that our only chance to figure out what was happening to us was to find you. Uh, and try to understand what happened to you. Uh, he's mostly speaking to Mitra, but of course. He does mean collectively. Yeah. Getting everybody together. Um, I don't know how much you know, but this threat that's striking at the Jedi, it's attacking us through the Force. Vruk didn't believe me, but he was willing to travel to Dantooine if only to help the settlers there. Right. And, uh, perhaps protect what was left of the Jedi Enclave. Whatever the reason, having us all drop out of sight, I thought, might make the enemy more bold. But then, uh, you happened. Uh, Mitra came back and, uh, became a new target for whoever was attacking us. Hmm. Why did you choose this, these places to hide, Mitra? Uh, well, they were places touched by war, and we thought there was a chance you could return to these worlds. If only to try and make a peace with what happened there during the war. But now the Sith have revealed themselves. That means the remaining Jedi will gather on Dantooine. From there, we can set a counterattack. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Who would be second in charge for, for Talia? One of her consulate, well, whatever. At the moment, I I kind of was, but I guess once I'm gone, it'll go to one of the generals. Hmm. Do you st- are, are you retiring, or are you... Well, I'm going... I, I do plan to go to Dantooine, as that is the agreed plan. Uh, well, I've seen seen the <laughs> the chaos that has ensued from from landing into the city um, I want to help with the reconstruction on that here is three billion credits to rebuild everything I will make sure this money gets to the queen before I leave mm-hmm. uh, tell them that the Jedi did it yes um Mitra says, "I saw I saw a hollow recording uh, recording of the Jedi Council meeting where you guys cast me out." Ah, so you heard what we said. These questions I cannot answer. Mm, this is something the Council must answer, not I. You must understand this is hard for me, especially after all you've done. But it is necessary. Why is this hard for you? Did you know that when I was training you, I considered making you my Padawan? I, I didn't. Uh, the demands of the Jedi Council uh, were too great, but I considered you a friend. I even tried to convince you to become a Jedi Guardian. We could have used someone like you. So the decision that had to be made was not easy. But I cannot say anything more. You've answered all my questions. Well, before you uh, leave, I would like to teach you an ability. And I will stay and listen. And he teaches all of you, so this will be for JP as well when he gets back, so just keep a note of it. Okay. Um, It is a force... It's an ability that will enhance your force powers if strain is taken. What's it called? Uh, There's no real name for it. So, basically, if you take strain, you get an extra enhance option on your force power. Uh, Force... For, mm, force focus? Force focus, yeah. We'll go with that. Uh, now, if you will excuse me, uh, I believe the queen is on her way back, and I will. I must make sure that the money is prepared to be moved where it needs to be. Mm-hmm. So at this point, Talia will return, and uh, she returns holding a box. Well... More of a... Well, it's a big box. It, it, it's a case. Think... think uh, Somewhere you'd put your treasure and stuff. It's a chest. chest. Yeah. Kind of like a chest, but not quite. It, it's got like more of like the arc... An arc type handles to it. Yeah. Um, she hands she hand you guys seven, 750 credits. As, and then... Uh, she says that these are relics uh, from their past. And she opens it and reveals uh, eight different pieces. There is a helmet, armor, gloves, uh, a belt, boots, a talisman, a ring, and a sword. Um, you will... And basically, they they will grant an extra boost to your uh, defenses for the mo- except for the sword. Obviously, the sword will be an extra on your attacks. Okay. Um, you so obviously the party's going to want to decide who will get what piece. That will probably be a discussion for when everybody gets back. Okay. I'll keep the note of the different pieces for you, just so that way. And what they do. Yeah. I reckon that JP will want the sword. The sword. The sword. Yeah. All right. Uh, and at that point, she will grant grant you this, and that'll be it. <sighs> 
Okay. Uh, thank you, respectfully, for for this for this artifact. You are very welcome. Thank you for the help. You are most welcome. We will never forget the heroic efforts of the Empire and the Republic and what they have done for us today. And I'll never forget this. <laughs> so, at this point, you guys, I'm assuming, return to the camp on Duxon. Mm -hmm. So there, you find only Dusto and Leela. What's been going on here? <laughs> and they don't look in good shape, either. They look hurt. Okay, well, what happened? Leela speaks up, and she says, It's just terrible. They're dead. Who's dead? Mandalore. HK. Honhar. How did they die? Well, we went there, and it was a Sith... It, we found a... Sith tomb. The Sith were trying to use it. And we fought them and they died. Mm. Dusto and I were the only ones to make it out. So, my mind, I'm thinking so the only two Force users in that particular grouping were the only two that survived. Yes. Would I be able to make that sort of connection as to why that could have happened, or? No, that's too big of a leap, I, I would think. Like, my, my character is actually thinking that, too. Well, what, what like, would, like, and what, like, like what like, is your character, what's, what maybe, are they guessing? Maybe the tomb would be, would be, uh, only allowing force users in there and everything else would be considered an intruder. And it That could have been, that, I mean, that could be something that could be perceived. Um, Dusto will speak up and say, on a lighter note, we did find another holocron. Were you able to retrieve it? Yes. He holds it up. Okay. I have not opened it yet, as I know that you would like to open it with me. Sounds good. And I guess not a sentence here. Because <laughs> she, cause she, the word, ho anything that sounds like the word holocron... <laughs> I am teleported there, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 All right. Um. Okay. What is your percept? No. What did we decide? Uh, that would probably be discipline. Whenever people are talking to each other about oh, things. Uh, Say somebody wanted to lie. Oh, that's, uh, that's, that's, uh, deception. Deception. Okay, thank you. No, 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 on, if, so if you're trying to perceive the lie, though. Oh, uh, that's either vigilance or, uh, I can't remember, it's probably vigilance. Okay. Vigilance or discipline. So what's your vigilance? Uh, it's max. Okay. So five. Go ahead and do your five green. Uh, so I have five hits, two triumphant. Okay. That's all I needed. Uh, and it's at this point, uh, once everybody's now caught up to what's going on, Kreia will uh, suggest that she'll look at everybody and say, I suggest that we return to the ship to plan our next course of action. Yes. Okay, do we want to call it a night here so that way... I mean, we can we can now do our little misadventure with my tree ant, dude. <laughs> There's not really too much yet that we can throw him in yet. Uh, well, well, we can we can take him through his his whole training session stuff with his master and whatnot, and what trials he might. Have oh, to oh, him. I know what you're talking about. And we don't have to walk every little thing out for that. I think that's that can be background stuff. Yeah. All right, and since I know from here the part, I I think the party as a whole will want to be here for stuff from here. We might want to. Yeah. 
call it. Plus, it's been two hours. Yep. Good game. Yay. Hey, everyone. Thank you for checking out the video. If you enjoyed what you just saw, be sure to give us a like, comment, and subscribe. If you don't want to miss any of our content, be sure to hit the bell icon where you will be notified anytime we upload a video. Also, if you wish to watch RPG Workshop live, you can follow Studio Bastion on Twitch. There, you can also enjoy his gameplay live streams and other podcasts that are in production. Also, if you like what we're doing here at Escape Reality Films, be sure to check out our Patreon and support us, and get some cool rewards in return.